Given the events in Israel, the massive terrorist attack launched by Hamas, I'm going to devote most of this, virtually all of the podcast to that single topic. But just a brief announcement before I get into it uh, related to police state. So we have um, sold out now our first theaters. I believe there are three theaters that are sold out. And I want to tell you this because as we get a little closer to the release, theaters start selling out and then people scramble. Oh, I wanted to go. I can't get tickets. Janesh, can you add more theaters? We won't be able to add more theaters now. We've made kind of a deal with the theater chains. And so get the tickets while they are available and don't wait until you can't get them. Uh, the website is policestatefilm.net. Um, now, by the way, if you can't go to the theater um, because it's, well, too far away, it's 40 minutes away, Dinesh, or uh, you can't go those days, October 23rd or 25th, that's okay. Uh, do the virtual premiere. The virtual premiere, you watch from the comfort of your home. Uh, live music related to the film. We screen the film and then a live Q&A with Dan Bongino and me. And it's all for the price of a movie ticket. Where can you get tickets for that? Same place, policestatefilm.net. Now, what happened in Israel is uh, a big deal. And in, in many ways, it is reminiscent of 9-11. Uh, of Why? Number one, the audacity of the attack. I mean, in 9-11, no one saw it coming. No one expected it. It was carried out with a kind of perverse and wicked genius. Uh, the, the using of planes as battering rams to slam into buildings. And here you have uh, a thousand or so Hamas terrorists backed by Iran. This is a carefully planned and coordinated attack. They come uh, tunneling through uh, the border checkpoints. They are able to evade checkpoints. Some of them come through the air. Uh, in other words, you, there was one almost uh, surreal scene of Hamas fighters like para gliding down with their weaponry into Israeli neighborhoods. They seize Israeli towns and hold them there. They kind of have their way with Israeli families. I mean, this is something that we have not seen in a very long time, if ever. And, um, and so you have a, a death count. I think it's currently around 800, but lots of people unaccounted for, lots of people uh, missing. Now, this is clearly a giant um, intelligence failure, but an intelligence failure not merely on the part of Israel, but also on the part of U.S. intelligence. Why? Because U.S. intelligence is supposed to be the best in the world. It's supposed to be monitoring things around the world. So how is it possible that Israeli intelligence, which is, which is second to none? Um, when Debbie and I went to Israel, uh, was it last year, honey? Um, you know, it's Israeli intelligence is at a different category. Normally you go on a plane and um, then you arrive. They have no idea really who you are. You go through passport control. They, they kind of click your passport and if nothing comes up, you go right through. But the guy sitting behind the desk has no idea who you are, why you're coming, what you're there for, where you've been before. But in Israel, it's a whole different thing. When you get on the plane to go to Israel, they know exactly who you are. They've already looked you up. They have uh, a map of your background. They know whether you need to take off your shoes or not. And a lot of people don't have to take off their shoes because they know exactly who you are. So when you have this level of intelligence, how can not one, not two, not five, but a thousand militant Hamas um, killers get into Israel in this way? Now, I don't know the answer to that, but I will say that it could be. And, and I say this because this is also a warning to us that in a highly divided society, uh, Israel is just as divided as the United States. There has been, have been bitter battles between the Netanyahu people and Netanyahu's opponents, mutual recriminations. Uh, and when they're all focused on that, they're all focused, how do we block Netanyahu's attempt to reform the Supreme Court? And so on, all the attention gets caught up in, let's get our political opponent and then you forget that there are enemies of the whole country that are out to get you and you're not keeping an eye on them. A second point to be made relative to the United States is that qu is it's quite possible that we never saw this coming. And I say, and I know we never saw this coming. There's a, there's a video of National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan last week, quote, 
the Middle East is quieter today than it has been for two decades. So this moron had no idea, right? He's supposed to be an intelligence chief. He has no clue. And, and again, why? Uh, and one theory, and I'm only offering it as a theory, is our intelligence agencies have redefined their mission. They're focused on domestic terrorism and domestic extremism. People like you and me. So they're, they're, they're tracking grandmothers. They're following kids. They're chasing people with MAGA flags. They're monitoring Trump rallies. And so because they've got this insane uh, uh, and meaningless focus, as if domestic terrorism is the greatest threat that the country faces, as a result... They're not paying attention to the people that they should be paying attention to. Let's think about it. After 9-11, a lot of us, me included, sort of handed over all this police power to the U.S. government to focus on, well, who? Exactly the kind of people who carried out these attacks. Islamic radicals and terrorists abroad who have nefarious schemes uh, aimed at America, aimed at the West, aimed at our allies like Israel. We haven't been watching them because we've been obsessed with something entirely domestic. Last month, the G20 group announced it welcomed discussion of the effects of implementing central bank digital currencies in their current countries. These digital currencies could allow the government to track every purchase you make. They could even allow officials to prohibit you from purchasing certain products or easily freeze or seize part or all of your money. In essence, they enable the government to control your finances. Now, concerned Americans are diversifying their assets into physical gold with the help of Birch Gold Group. If you want a physical asset held in a tax-sheltered retirement account, you should call Birch Gold. Debbie and I are customers. We buy our gold through Birch Gold. But find out for yourself. Text Dinesh to 989898. They'll send you a free information kit on gold. Here's an easy way to become a customer. If you have an IRA of 401k from a previous employer, Birch Gold can help you convert it into an IRA in gold. You don't pay a penny out of pocket. Text Dinesh to 989898. Claim your free information kit on gold and call Birch Gold because if digital currency becomes a reality, it's going to be nice to have some gold to fall back on.